All right, y'all. This is the Texas Garden Guy Show. It's a weekly show where I answer gardening questions from the DMs. So here we go. First question is, hi, I'm wondering if you can help us. We live in New Braunfels, Texas. Plant a society garden like earlier in the spring. We have some varmints, we think raccoons, that may be digging them up at night. We treated for grubs and other bugs. My husband laid out some poison. Uh, we had small rat traps at one point, but they keep coming. Any other ideas to keep these critters away? Uh, in my experience, this is probably armadillos, especially in New Braunfels, right there close to the river and stuff. Uh, you're probably going to have a bunch of armadillos, and that's okay. Uh, what a lot of people do is they will put up little electric fences around their flower beds. Uh, there's even some stuff called bonide repels all. It's like a granule you put out, and it's supposed to uh, ward away some of the, the mammals that plague the garden. Uh, but honestly, <laughs> unless you're like putting out live traps and catching them on a weekly basis, uh, armadillos are going to stick around. And they are, they are our friends. They do a good job of taking care of like grubs and stuff in the garden. So as a uh, I mean, other than putting up like a fence and then digging like a fence into the ground, keep them out. There's not a whole lot you can do, uh, but you can trap them. Uh, I've, like I said, I heard of the granules you can use and I've heard of the electric fences, but armadillos are pretty resilient. It's hard to keep them out of your garden. All right, the next question is, uh, they must have seen my Pomeria video. Uh, these are my Pomerias. <laughs> they have stalks that are bending over. Oh my God. Uh, the soil meter reads dry. Uh, so pomerias are something that you don't water every single day. They're something you're going to maybe water once or twice a week. As you can see, she's got some tall pomerias. Uh, when pomerias get really tall, they get kind of top heavy. And, you know, the best thing you could probably do with this is go ahead and stake them up or maybe even top them off. If the base is getting too thin and the top is getting super heavy, they're going to bend and possibly snap in half. What I would do is maybe, maybe, uh, I would maybe top this plant. I would maybe top it, cut it, let it scab over, and you can propagate all those cuttings that you have on the top. But obviously, the top is way too heavy for the bottom to support it. So you can either stake it or you can top it. Either way, uh, you'll be fine. I would probably wait to top it in the fall when it goes dormant. Uh, but it looks like your plant is doing good. It's just getting a little too tall for its britches. She must be using Nelson's Pomeria food. All right, this is a good one right here. Uh, so one of your posts I asked about how to treat my squash to get rid of squash bugs and vine borers. Well, to prevent them. I can't find it now and don't remember that product you recommended. Could you please tell me again? The spring planted squash was a wash, but I'm trying again for the fall and want to protect them better this way. So when it comes to squash bugs and squash vine borers, Two different insects, but you can treat them both at the same time to prevent them. So early in the spring when I plant my squash from transplant, I'm going to go ahead and start treating with a weekly round of neem oil. And that's a good way to prevent the squash vine borers and the squash bugs from taking over. Now once the squash bugs, which get mistaken for stink bugs, take over, the only thing that I have found to get rid of the squash bugs is either coming out here and killing each one by hand or pyrethrin or seven dust. It's the only thing I've found that will actually penetrate the exoskeleton. As far as the vine borers go, once you see a vine borer moth, it's probably too late. That's why you need to be preventative, be proactive, because once you have those moths hanging around, laying their eggs, getting in there, it's probably too late. So definitely go with some neem oil. Do it once a week and you'll definitely have better results. All right, so this question is, what is your favorite potting and garden soil? So my favorite potting and gardening soil is the best potting and gardening soil I can afford. Uh, for me, uh, my go-to for like my raised beds and doing container gardens has got to be like Landscaper's Pride Garden Magic for buying large quantities, unless you go get it by the truckload. But I always tell people to get the best soil they can afford. If you can go get premium soil and get a whole truckload or trailer load, that's your best bet for uh, filling up raised beds uh, or having a giant pile on standby. I live in a subdivision. I don't have anywhere where I can put a giant pile of soil, so I end up bagging it. So yeah, I always tell people to buy the best potting soil you can afford. Now there's great stuff like heirloom soil uh, from the ground up. Lots of good soil mixes that I typically will use a more 
cost efficient mix to fill my container and then I'll top it with a more premium mix. So that's my best bet. Uh, the best soil I can afford, that's my favorite. Or if someone gives me some free soil, that's my favorite soil. <laughs> All right, so this question is about my Armenian cucumber post. Where did you get the Armenian striped cucumber seeds? So I get my seeds from a couple different places. I go uh, to Baker Creek uh, Seeds, I go to San Diego Seed Company, and I go to David's Garden Seed Company. Uh, David's Garden Seed Company is a veteran-owned seed company out of San Antonio that I really like. Uh, Baker Creek is going to have those odd varieties. You know, if you're looking for something like you've never seen before, Baker Creek's a great one to go to. And then San Diego Seed Company is a newer company that I've been working with uh, to get some different varieties as well. But I believe I got the Armenian cucumbers from David's Garden Seeds. They have a really good variety. Check them out. They're right there in San Antonio, Texas. They even have a storefront that you can go visit and shop there in person. What I will recommend you do is don't buy your seeds on Amazon. Go to the actual seed company's website. Uh, Amazon charges so much commission that they have to raise the prices on seeds on Amazon. So go to the actual seed company's website, order there. They usually have competitive uh, free shipping. So definitely go check them out on their websites instead of going to Amazon. Just out of curiosity, how long does it take for a Muscogee crepe myrtle to mature up to eight to 10 feet in height? Well, I don't know what variety a Muscogee crepe myrtle looks like, but I've got a Natchez crepe myrtle sitting right behind us. I don't know if y'all can see the top of it. I bought that crepe myrtle at Home Depot, I believe, for like $10. It was on the clearance rack uh, probably three years ago. And right now, I would say it is every bit of 12 feet tall right now. Uh, I had it in the uh, in a pot for a, a couple years, and then last year I put it in the ground, and crepe myrtles will do amazing once you put them in the ground. So if you want your tree to grow fast, I would say put it in the ground, feed it your Nelson's uh, crepe myrtle food uh, on the recommended basis, keep it fed, keep it well watered, and uh, it'll grow really fast. I would say within two to three years, depending on the variety, there are some dwarf varieties, you can expect a 10 to 12 foot crepe myrtle. Hi, I love watching your videos. I was wondering if you have any tips, hit, tips or hints on how to prune fig trees. We have one that was, has grown tremendously over the past few years, and it is unfortunately now taking over my parking space. Uh, so I have a lot of fig trees in my backyard, and I mow my lawn. Uh, so from time to time, I'll have a branch that's poking out, and I will prune it back, uh, which is like any time of the year. Figs are pretty resilient, but my uh, optimum time to do your fig uh, your fig pruning is in the early spring or fall preferably in the fall after they produce all their crops of figs they're going to produce a breba crop in the spring and then a real good quality crop in the fall so if you can wait prune it in the fall and then you won't have to also deal with dieback so if you cut a limb off of a fig tree right now you want to leave two to three inches coming off that main trunk because if you don't you're going to have dieback up against the trunk so when I'm pruning something off, especially when it's this hot, give it a couple inches. Give it, give it a couple inches off the main trunk where you cut it, uh, so you have some room for dieback and it won't affect the main trunk of the plant. But in the fall or winter when they're dormant, you can really kind of prune a little closer to the main trunk. But I, tr I actually prune in the fall after the last crop, so that I can do all my propagation. So that's why I wait as well. Great question. All right, so this person has a bougainvillea question. Hi, what can I do for my bougainvillea? No blooms currently in pots live in Florida. Very healthy, lots of greenery. Uh, so bougainvilleas are a lot like plumerias and desert roses. They're heavy feeders. So if you're having lots of green growth, that's good. That means the health. Uh, that means the plant is healthy. Uh, but uh, what I like to do to really get the blooms going, and you can kind of see on my orange right here, I've got a bunch of blooms. I use this Nelson's bougainvillea food, and it is applied once every 14 days so they're heavy feeders especially during the flowering time of year make sure you're watering them a couple times a week and make sure you feed them with some good bougainvillea fertilizer like this nelson's if you're looking for some awesome fertilizer for all your plants make sure to check out nelson's plant food i actually have a link in my bio that'll get you 10 percent off and they got plant food for all the plants all right so this person asks why are my herbs leaves dying there's a couple of different pictures Looks like some basil. Uh, basically what happens with herbs is they don't last very long. Um, you can prune off some of the dead stuff, but herbs will eventually die back. Uh, you, you can keep some alive, uh, but the fact of the matter is plants lose leaves. 
plants die, plants leaves die and they turn yellow and they fall off. Uh, so no need to worry, the plant might be okay. Uh, just prune it off and you should be fine. All right, we got another fig question. Hey man, I know you're something of a fig expert. I don't know about all that. Uh, I've got these rust colored spots all over my Olympia st figs, stems, and leaves. Every single one. I've treated with copper fungicide twice. I've got a couple other varieties that have had leaves like this, but I removed and treated them also. And they seem to be doing fine. This one got worse. Is this maybe something else bacterial or viral? It is in a large spot, or it's in a large pot, and I've been very careful about managing the water. What can I, can, what can I control anyhow? Any ideas? Uh, so rust is just part of figs. Uh, every single year, it doesn't matter the heat, the water, uh, you're going to have fig rust on your leaves, and they're going to completely probably drop their leaves. They're going to scare you, think the fig is dying. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, rust is just kind of what happens with figs every single year. Um, usually it happens like after the first crop, you'll drop all your leaves and kind of get crusty and red. Uh, there is a virus called fig mosaic virus, which is very rare. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it because I've never actually seen it, uh, but there is no cure to fig mosaic virus. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much. It's probably not that. Uh, so don't worry, just keep watering your figs like normal. Figs are drought tolerant, uh, but if they're producing figs, they will produce more figs if you give them more water. So uh, just keep going like normal. I'm sure that fig will come back. Uh, make sure to give it some fertilizer. If you're watering more often because it's hot, you definitely need to feed that plant. Uh, so that could be an issue as well. It could also be to getting too big for the pot. If you've had that fig in a giant pot and it's been in that pot for a couple years, it might be getting root rot. It might have actually grown roots through the drainage holes, clogged them up, and that plant might be dying. So maybe try putting in a different container. That could be an issue as well. So it could be a multitude of different things. Uh, it's probably not the fig mosaic virus. All right, this person says, I'm in Central Texas and came across your videos. If you don't have time to answer, that could, that's completely understandable. I don't have a life, I'll answer the question, uh, but I have a desert willow and unsure if it needs to be trimmed. Really want a professional answer. I'll show a pic and any advice is so appreciated. I love this little tree and sadly lost the second one. Thanks so much. Oh, that sucks. Uh, these are beautiful little trees. I'd love to have one in my yard. Uh, when it comes to pruning your trees, I would hold off on any pruning if you can wait. If you can wait and do it in the fall, I recommend doing that. Was that a hawk? There's a giant hawk just flew over my head. Uh, but anyway, if you can wait to prune any of your trees till the fall and winter, I would highly recommend doing that. Uh, if you're having problems and you think you're gonna, it's gonna fall over, then maybe what I would do is stake it up, try to straighten it up. All right, guys, I hope that helped. If y'all have any more questions, drop them down in the comment section below or send me a DM on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll try to get to them next week. See you later.